let's do. I'm gonna do one about. Uh... Okay, I got, I got one. So, a lot of the time I get asked why did I start Flat Pelican as opposed to trying to go the traditional route, which is a fair question, and it took a little bit of time to kind of decide. Um, one of the reasons is the first editor I used, uh, the woman who edited Coward, had recommended me one of two ways to go. We could make Coward a very commercially viable novel, tone it down, remove certain parts, shorten it, and add this kind of well-known arc to it. Or we could leave it as it is, keep it more of a niche interest, and I could go my own route. I asked her what was easier. She said they're both extremely difficult. Um, I am happy I did what I did because it didn't snuff out any of the voice or any of the uniqueness, I think, that made that book so interesting. It didn't dumb down the Lucy character and it didn't try and build Sam up more than he needed to be. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they both require patience. The patience on the commercial end, if you were to make the book with a, with a publisher, is that you have to be patient and wait for the right agent. You have to be patient and wait for the rollout. You have to be patient and wait. You're always waiting on things. Whereas if you're going the independent route, that patience is basically the patience of having to build your brand, build what you're kind of creating up to a point where you feel that it's perfect because it's going to be you who makes the last call. It's not going to be an editor for the company. It's not going to be an agent. It's going to be you who makes all these decisions. So you have to kind of maneuver the story to a point where you're happy and you still think it'll it'll make other people happy because at the end of the day, even if you're writing for yourself, you still have to think about the audience. You can write forever in a day. You can cover every stitch of the sidewalk with your story, but people might just walk on it and not even look at it. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Um, they both require a lot of decisions, um, like the decision whether or not you want to change what's in the book to make it more suitable for the requirements of uh, another company, or the decision to leave and take stuff out based on what your editor or what you think, and the decision to basically promote it and how to promote it. Um, the problem with signing to a another a publisher, another company, is that you have a tendency to have to conform to this mold and allow yourself to be pigeonholed as a certain author, whether that be a science fiction author, prime author, satirical author, it doesn't matter. If you go about it your own route, independently, you can write whatever you want. You can do a gritty urban teen fiction. You can do a fantastic political satire. You can do a philosophy book. You can do sci-fi. You can do noir. You can do whatever. Because at the end of the day, when you are going independent, people are basically sticking around for you and what your emblem stands for, however you decide to create, however you decide to, there we go. They're basically sticking around for you or your company and whatever that means, whatever you've put down as the thesis, as the modus operandi. Um, with independent, you get a lot of freedom because you're your own jefe. So you have to make the decisions of whether or not to kind of limit yourself or go full on. This is good and bad because if you're very lax about it, you can you can basically take the world. But it might make it might alienate some readers. It might make it more inaccessible. Whereas if you choose to pull in too much, it might not be appealing to everybody. It might just be cliched or not interesting. Finally, for me, the biggest choice was the branding. Um, I chose Fly Pelican because I wanted to hide behind a logo. Uh, I didn't ever think I'd be doing something like this. I didn't think that it would be a possibility that I would have to hop in front of a camera. But you need to expose your brand. You need to show people why you're different and what you have. Um, and that's weird. 
because everyone, when they start off, has an ego, and they think that theirs is the best. Just like parents, they think that their children's the smartest, or their 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 product is gonna just attract people because they made it, because they're interested. In Full they're disclaimer: smart. I don't think my parents ever at any point thought that. <laughs> no, I mean that's fair. I'm pretty sure, you know, sorry is what it is. But I think that you have to you learn really quickly that to humble yourself and tone down that ego and you have to find this symbiotic relationship between you as you and the brand being an extension or a branch of you. Um, and then you basically have to find out what separates you from the pack and run with that. But I make, I'm happy that I went independent, mostly because I can still put things out and I can put them out when I want. It's stressful dealing with the marketing and the editing and having the last say in all my product, but I trust myself. I've learned to trust myself and I've learned to trust the people around me. So that's probably my best advice is if you trust yourself, then go for it. Uh, if you don't, then don't. <laughs>